Hi Natasha. How are you? You okay? Okay, let me know if this sounds okay, please. I think it is, but just need to check. Brilliant. Uh, yes, very cold here today. Cold, wet, and dark. So I've just put um, an extra light on, just to give me a little bit more light, because it's like it's like the land of the midnight, no sun. To be honest. Hi Anne. How are you? Hope you're feeling um, okay. Uh, just give it a couple of minutes just to uh, see how many other people join us. I can see Christine's just popped in. Do you think those folders look amazing? I just, wow. I said this is my favourite um, release, but um, too cold, dark and windy. Yeah, it's not windy here, Natasha. It's It's just cold rainy and dark um i don't mind winter i don't mind it being cold as long as it's dry hi christine um yeah so the uh, embossing folders how amazing do they look and that's just on plain ordinary white card um i think elizabeth samples on plain white card were just amazing um hope i can do the folders just this this afternoon i'm going to try not to say hey ho so just for natasha i'm going to try and resist saying that today so i'm nice and warm in my craft room because i put the heating on i don't like being cold so what time is it three minutes past I think we'll crack on um, and then if anybody else joins us so much um, so much the, for the better so today I'm not going to be making um, one card I'm going to be making two and the only reason I'm going to be making two is to show you how to get over um, a slight problem if you make the same problem if you make the same mistake that I did so let's get cracking so, the lovely Anne um, made a beautiful card, which I hope you've all seen um, a sneak peek of. I don't know whether Anne's put the full reveal on yet, but it's similar to this one. I wanted to um, do a take on the same card because I just thought it looked so striking. Uh, Anne's is blue based and I've used sort of um, teal colours because I, I really like these colours for Christmas. Hi Lisa, how are you? Um, so yeah, I've gone with the same sort of layout uh, just to put a different take on it really. Um, but just to prove that I don't need to always copy other people, um, I've also done a separate card, which is, again, there's no stamping. Well, the, that's not strictly true. I did stamp the TH. But the rest is die cutting and obviously the um the winter wishes comes from the festive ticker phrases so i sort of did a teeny weeny bit of stamping but as far as today's cards go other than this winter wishes which i've used again there isn't any stamping on the ones i've done today so i don't know whether you can see on this card here the 25th i have actually used one of the embossing folders now, i don't know whether you i'm just waiting for my camera to catch oh there you go i've used the boxes um on the the two and the five it, it doesn't show up fantastically well because i have double embossed it as well because i wanted it to be shiny so it doesn't although it doesn't show up really really well it is there and it just gives a little bit of a different um effect on those finished numbers 
So let's just crack on and get get on with it. Now, one question that I thought about was, um, do you emboss first and then die cut, or do you die cut and then emboss? Now, I've done both here, and I don't know whether you can tell the difference. If I just bring those up slightly nearer to the camera, I don't know. I think you can. I think you can see a difference between those two pieces. Can you tell me which one you think is which? Which have I die cut first and which have I embossed first and then die cut? Go on, give you I'll give you a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds just to have a look at those and type an answer. Because I know it takes my, my um, laptop a while to just catch up with um, your comments. But you can do either is the answer, really. You will get a slightly different finish depending on which way round you do it. Um, left die cut first. Yes. Yeah. You can tell, can't you? Yeah absolutely spot on but then I would expect you to to be able to answer that and get it right to be fair um, yeah this one I um, die cut it first and then I embossed it and this one I embossed it first and then die cut it and you'll you can see that this one is a little bit flatter it's still well raised it still looks like a 3d embossed piece of card but it's not quite as proud as this um, and yes, I would always die cut first and then emboss. Having said that, when I die cut my shapes to go on this card, I um, embossed first and then die cut because they're just a little bit too fiddly to put back through and, and die cut. I suppose you can. and. There's no reason why you can't, but I, that was just the way round that I'd done it, um, and I had to I had to do two two goes at it because obviously on your folder you've got a an an emboss and a deboss. Now I don't know whether if I bring that up I don't know whether you can see that this side is debossed and this side is embossed. So this is raised and this is the lines are raised and the rest is sort of um, got a, a recess on it. I don't know whether you can tell that from that um, that close up. But what you need to remember is if you're working on white card, it's not so bad. But if you're going to die cut first, then obviously you want the embossing to be on the, the right side of the card. So where it's raised, that is going to push up through your card. So these are the bits that it's going to push up and the lines are going to push down. So you want the embossed side to come up through your card. So you will put the, the card on that side, onto the embossed side, so that your debossed side actually makes the impression together with the embossed side. Now, obviously these are six by six folders and I was trying to make the um, folder fit the die cut by extending it and I did do that but what I did was I didn't do it quite right so what I was left with was this and you can see here the line of the edge of the embossing folder now I didn't want to waste this which is why I'm doing the second card after I've done the first one. I'm just going to show you how you can disguise that so you don't waste this piece of card. I know it's just a piece of white card, but it all costs money, doesn't it? So I'm trying to be a bit frugal and save myself a few pennies. So I'll show you how to just rectify that in a little while. But for those of you who don't do much embossing, I just thought that I would show you how to extend your um, plate so that it will fit your um, slim dies. Now I had to, um, I messaged Anne to say please 
tell me what I'm doing wrong because I thought I'd done it right but what I hadn't done was leave it hanging outside the plates enough so my piece of card this is pre die cut and the die cut stitching is on the top you can tell the difference because it's it, it's not as prominent on the back so you can tell which is the right way up so I've put that in my embossing folder and fold it down and then I'm going to place it on my plate with the end of the folder hanging over the edge of the plate okay and then I'm going to put my um, combination of mats on the top of that so you see when I've got all my mats together you can see that the edge of this embossing folder is over the edge of the plate okay now I know you, you can't see me die cutting this but I am because you can hear the machine turning I think okay so that's the first bit sorry about that loud bang okay so look that is beautifully embossed isn't it so now you want to extend this and I would place it I would replace it so that you've got the piece you haven't embossed but if you move this around on the debossed side it will fit into the lines perfectly and it won't move trust me I'm trying to move that on this plate and it's not doing that it's not moving on that folder at all so I'm just going to fold that over again put it on the edge over the edge of my plate that's right isn't it yeah over the edge of my plate so that this end that wasn't embossed before will be embossed when I've just put this through my machine so I'll just lift that up and put that in there preferably without bending the card see bent the card when I put it in the machine that's because I'm trying to do it quick but there you go you can see that's beautifully extended and there's no line across anywhere that that shows you that's what you've done but it is possible it's it's very easy it just takes a little bit of practice and um, and like I say if you do make a mistake then it's easily rectifiable which I'll show you in a sec so my first card is based on the one that Anne did which is this one so if I leave that there um, now I've gone for different colours this time I'm going to use that that piece there because that was the piece I die cut first and then embossed so I'm using um, a piece of purple in the background because the colours that I've used on my shapes here are um, distress ink pads and they're peacock feathers evergreen bow and wilted violet and what I wanted was this backing card to just lift the wilted violet out of this background piece which you'll see in a sec what I mean hi Natalia hi Mary yes I think if I had to pick a favorite I think I would have to go for the padded quilt and um, whilst they are all absolutely amazing um, and, and I truly mean that um, I think the padded quilt is my absolute favorite now what I didn't do before I started was just run around the edge of this card because it's got a white core on it and I don't really want the white core showing on the edge of my card I didn't want to do that so I just run my Copic marker which is sort of the, the same sort of purple as long as it's a purple colour it's not going to matter and then pop that down on my card in the background now I did think of just putting a purple background down and just covering the whole of the base of the card but I decided against that because when I looked at it it was just a little bit too much and um, just just too purple so I wanted it to be a little bit more subtle so then I've used the and I've used the postage um, edge slims on here. I'll show you the one I've used. 
I haven't I got those out? Oh, I haven't reached those out. Perhaps Natasha will put me the link on um, on the comments for me, please. But the three different sets of um, slim dies, postage edge, the um, wavy edge and the torn edge, um, I just think are, they're just superb. Um, they cut beautifully on any card. This is the American Crafts cardstock, which I absolutely adore. Um, I have quite a little stash of it now. Um, that's Lisa's fault because she said how fantastic it was. Um, so I had to go and buy some. And I have to agree with her. It is a pretty fantastic card. I know Tina uses it a lot in her card making. But it, it really does make a difference. So that's my postage edge. Slim backing going on there. might not be totally straight but I'm not going to say it Natasha I'm not going to say it now this is white and I just wanted to take the starkness away from this so um, I'm just going to go round the edge with my brush just with what's left on the brush from when I made the um, these little pieces before because I don't want it to be in your face I don't want it to be really really bright and obvious I just want a little bit of colour round the edge so I am actually going to have to put a little bit on on the brush but a little does go an awful long way so you don't have to necessarily re-ink your brush when you're doing this it's always better to put a little bit on and add a little bit more because once you've put it on and it's a bit thick obviously you can't take it away again so that'll do I just wanted a hint of the colour on the background there and then that will go down there like that now because these are so beautifully embossed um, you will find that it, it might take a little while just to stick the um, embossed part down because obviously there's a lot of raised pieces on here so I just pay a little bit of attention to the inside parts of the embossing see in between those lines so that when you're actually sticking it down you are actually sticking all the edges as well um, that way you just get a it, it might look like it's lifting but it but it isn't it's just the way the die embosses so beautifully that these these edges here you can see look as though they're lifting but they're not it's because they're so beautifully embossed and they sit so proud that because they're a, a half square if you like it does look like they're lifting but they're really not and they are secured beautifully so don't worry about that the look adds to the card I feel so then using the same um, slims the postage stamp edge I've cut some background pieces um, in this in this American card American craft card stock and then my three matching pieces and the beauty of having all three um, sets of dies is that if you want to cut more than one shape, you can. You can cut three at a time because they're all based on the same shapes. All the, the apertures are based on the same shapes. So you can cut three squares, three hexagons and three circles all at the same time. It saves such an awful lot of time um, when you're doing card making like this. Um, I just put these down and then I'll just run through how I did the, the colours on this card and the card I've used for the these pieces um, is a uh, coated card stock so it's glossy and it just gives a little bit of a shine doesn't necessarily shine while you're inking it but there is a, 
neat little trick that you can do to just add that little bit of shine after you've finished adding your ink, blending your ink. Now you can see how quick this card is coming together which is why I thought I would do two. Primarily to show you how to rectify a mistake with your um, embossing if you don't get it quite right so that you're not wasting card um, and partly because I knew it would be so quick because obviously I'm not going to sit here and die cut everything while you're watching that's just boring and I don't want to I don't want to, I don't want to bore you um, I mean I might be anyway but I hope not so they're all going to go on there I'm just going to place those where I think they need to go and then I'm going to glue them down one at a time without removing the others because obviously that's going to give me a guide as to where I'm placing um, the other pieces. So I want them about the same distance apart from each other. I'll do the other end first and then the one in the middle I can, I can sort of make sure is actually totally in the middle. Um, it's one of my favourite colours on, uh, especially for Christmas. I just think um, teal and those sorts of colours, for me, just just say Christmas. I, I don't know why. I know everybody's got their ideas about whether it should be traditional red, green and gold or whatever. But we're all different, aren't we? And that's what it's all about, is adapting whatever you see to the colours that you want to use. OK, so then I added the little flowers that go in the middle. And these little flowers are done with the uh, Build a Bloom die set. And I've actually used these two here. So on the back of the package, they, these are bigger than the, the actual dies. These are probably a bit more like the the right size actually, the correct size, if a little bigger. But these were just perfect for just adding into the middle of here. I've stuck them together already, so I've used the two pieces and I've just stuck the smaller one on top of the larger one and twisted it so that it's it's alternating because I just think um, that looks that looks really pretty. And like I say, when I saw Anne's card, I just thought I need to do that. I need to make one that's similar to that. I don't think there's a sentiment on Anne's, uh, but I I just, I don't know, I just wanted to add, add a sentiment. So the sentiments that I used come from the uh, brand new A5 worded sheets that Lisa bought to you not long ago. And there are so many um, sentiments on here that really apply to what we've all been going through um, you know I'll zoom you later I mean who heard of zoom before lockdown let's be honest um, I, I don't think I have I knew there were ways of video calling people but I'd never heard of zoom and I think it's it's just become one of the new words in the dictionary um, which I find quite extraordinary we have a lockdown and we get a new word in the dictionary because of it but whatever whatever so on my original card I went with happy thoughts happy smiles but because this is going to a very special friend um, I wanted to use a different sentiment and I've gone with create memories share memories because that just, I just think it's a beautiful sentiment. These, that is actually two different sentiments on that, on that set. But I think together they, they just work. So that's why I've gone with those. Um, now looking at where I'm putting this sentiment here, I could probably have gone down a little bit with these, but they're stuck now, so I can't move them. But it is what it is. It's a handmade card, made with love. So. Who knows it was wrong or not quite right? Nobody. Now obviously I am adding a few gems because I do, as Claire says. I 
can't finish a card without a bit of sparkle. So I'm actually using some of Lisa's flat back gems in purple. If I could find the other purple one, I'd use the other one as well. Hmm. I think if I took them out, I might stand more of a chance. There it is. So I've used two small ones and a large one. So the large one for the middle and then two small ones on the outside. So that's a bubble. Let's get rid of that bubble there. Pop that down. And don't worry about the gems um, squishing the glue out of the side. It's a clear glue. It will dry clear, so nobody's going to see it anyway. And obviously I'm using Lisa's fabulous pickup tool because I, I could not operate without this anymore. It's just perfect for this sort of work, and especially on the second one that I'm going to show you. So there you go, there's the first one. I mean, how quick was that? All die cut. You can do all your die cutting in one, in one sitting and then go back and do all your card making and put it all together. I just think that's, that's such a quick but effective card. So on the second one, what I did was when you cut these out, I always think it's a shame to not use the little frame of card that you're left with after you've cut this one out. So because I cut out the um, die there out of this card, I've used that frame on a, on a card base and then I've cut another um, base plate and, and fitted it in. Now it's not, it doesn't quite fit perfectly because obviously with this being quite um, movable, I've, I've sort of moved the frame to fit the card. So when I've come to add this bit in, you can't, although it, you can't really tell, it, it's, it's the tiniest gap look. So what I did underneath was just go over that bit of card with a bit of contrasting um, colour ink so that you couldn't really, it didn't stand out as much. So I've already glued the frame down because the frame is a bit fiddly. Well worth the effort, I think, but it is a bit fiddly to do on a live. So I decided to just glue that down um, already. You all know how to glue stuff down, don't you? You don't need, you don't need me to sit and show you how to do that. So then I'm putting that one in there. So I've already got my frame. So it sort of looks matted and layered, but not matted and layered, if you know what I mean. So then I was using the uh, mini doily dies, this one. And I've used this die here. This is my favourite. I like these two. Um, out of the set of four, these are the two that I've used most of um, because they just remind me of snowflakes. Um, I think you could probably use the others for snowflakes, but I know that Tina's used this one for flowers. And I think this was the one that Natasha used on her live on Wednesday. So it just shows how versatile they are. You can use them for so many different things. But these two particularly, I think, remind me of snowflakes. So that's why I've gone with those. And you'll see that on the original card that I did, obviously it's a, it's a three part die. So this is your base. This gives you a tiny little frame and this little frame will cut out the main doily part of the die. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's fabulous card and, but um, it, it's not the cheapest, but I have to say it is well worth the money. So if you can find some, I would try and wait until it's on offer somewhere because um, that's why, that's when I got mine, but it is worth it. Um, so going back to these, this is the little frame that will cut this out. You can use this to cut out a, a shape as well if you wanted to without using this. Um, and those two would sit on top of one another. So they're obviously all designed to fit um, and, and back onto one another, which is what I like about them. So on the one that I did in preparation, I've used the um, big base cutout and I did that in Miricard and then use my two different colours of card to, to cut these two out. Now, I thought, well, I shouldn't have done it that way. What I should have done was um, added this top piece 
the, the intricate pattern piece onto mirror card. I'll do that on my live. And actually, having done it, I wish I hadn't. I wish I'd stuck with the mirror card in the background because when I come to put the um, gems on here um, in a little while, I don't think they're going to stand out as much on the mirror card as they do on here. So obviously it's personal choice, um, but it's it's all about it's all about playing with them. Um, yes, Heidi, you, you do definitely do, um, but not that I'm enabling at all. I, I wouldn't dream of it, but you do. Um, so I added this I've already glued this piece because obviously when you're gluing card to mirror card it can take a little while to actually adhere properly so I wanted to just do that and get that bit out of the way now I don't know whether you can see that um, when I glued it the glue although it dries clear on mirror card it does leave um, a mark so I just used a damp cloth and just wiped over the mirror card which is fine it did get rid of a lot of the glue marks but what I also did was it roughed up the card in the middle because obviously I was using a damp cloth. So I've actually added some of Lisa's interference glitter um, in the turquoise just to disguise that a little bit. But it's just worth bearing in mind. I think I would save the mirror card as the background from now on. That's my, that's my personal opinion anyway. So I'm just going to add this to, let me move this out of the way. I'm just going to add this to the backing. The, these dies cut so beautifully and they're so intricate. The little um, tiny pieces that also cut out beautifully. Um, these little pieces here, these three little dots here, just fall out of the card. They're beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why I put the glue on that yet. I'm going to glue this down. Now this is the piece that I hadn't embossed properly because I hadn't actually put my embossing folder far enough over the edge of the die cut plate, the die cutting plate. So consequently I was left with a line across the middle of the card. But because I didn't want to waste it I thought I will just use it in another way and disguise the fact that I made a bit of a boo-boo because what do they call them they're not um, mistakes in crafting they're happy accidents so you can now see that my card is my embossed piece of card is down and I've got this line across the middle here um, where I hadn't actually moved my plate enough. So what I've done is I've used one of the um, festive ticker phrases, this winter wishes here, and I've stamped it in a similar colour to the colour scheme that I'm using. And for that I used my Versafine Claire, which is, this is Warm Breeze, and it's just a perfect colour to match with everything else that I'm doing. And that is going to sit along there and disguise the fact that I made that boo-boo and um, didn't emboss my whole piece properly. But when you add that down there, like that, who's going to know? Only you. So if only you know and you don't tell anybody, nobody else is going to know, are they? So now this piece can go on my backing card here. Like so. She said hoping the glue hasn't dried in the meantime don't think it will have done I can always just lift it off and add a little bit more glue later if I need to and then this piece is going down here um, I didn't want to use the numbers on this one didn't want them to be exactly the same I just wanted to show you how many different ways that you could sort of use the the one folder if you can only afford one folder um and you know let's face it this year's been really hard so money for crafting is probably one of 
the last things you want to spend your money on but what i would say is if you can afford more than one then then go for more than one because um i know they've got a really good price point on them and i don't think they'll be that price point again so i, I would i would treat yourself tell 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 yourself it's from father christmas um because let's face it father christmas never knows what to buy you anyway does he now with this embossing folder because um as soon as i saw it i actually thought yeah padded quilts the perfect name and it looks like the old-fashioned um really puffy quilts that my nan used to have on my bed when i used to go and stay and it, it just brought back so many memories and I thought the ideal thing to use with these is pearls because where the dots are on here, I just think the pearls will just make, will just finish it off because it just adds to that quilted look. So I might not get all of these done, but if I put enough on just to show you the, now look, see, what I didn't do was go around the edge of the white bit with my ink, did I? Never mind bit much there but the beauty of Lisa's pickup tool is it is so quick and easy to add your pearls to your quilt it's just one of those it's so therapeutic adding these and seeing the effect when they're all added I mean I did I did another one where I'd added pearls and I think it's on one of my um, samples that are in the group. Uh, the dark, dark teal one with the copper leaves centre. And I've put pearls around the edge and I think they're pink on the one that I've done. But I just think it, it just adds that finishing touch to a card. And especially this one because it's quilted and because it just, I, I don't know words fail me lisa horton these embossing folders are awesome there is just no other word for them they're just awesome um i'm not going to finish that now but then what i did on here as you can see on this one was i used the flat back ab gems which is what i'm going to use on here i put a large one in the middle and i think when you see what I mean about how they they don't really stand out as much as I wanted them to on the other one I thought they just I thought they stood out against the card um, I'll finish it off in a minute but you see on the mirror card because the mirror card shiny it sort of detracts from the um, the AB gems Whereas on this one, it enhances it, if you know what I mean. So although you can see them and they look okay, I think they look better on this one. So I think I'd stick with my mirror card as my base again. But this um, was done with the cube folder, as I say. And then I double embossed it so that it was shiny and there was a little bit more, um, made the numbers a little bit more robust. So those are my four cards that i've made with purely just one folder and um, so it just goes to show that if you can if you can only afford one you can do so much with it and um, you won't be lost for ideas especially if you look at all the samples that the girls have done in the group um, I, I just think it's i just think it's a beautiful way to make cards but if I just quickly show you this, this glossy card has got peacock feathers on it. And all I'm going to add to it is a little bit of evergreen bow. It does dry quite quickly on this card. Um, but I don't think it I don't think it detracts from the colour underneath. And once you've done it and you've added all the colours that you want, if I just do this a little bit quickly um 
and then I just wanted to add my wilted violet. This is one of my all-time favourite colours. Um, and just add that on the top. See how that just sits on the top of your card but blends with all the other colours. Um, it, it doesn't look as though... It looks like a ready-made, bought um, piece of coloured cardstock to my mind. Uh, there are so many different cardstocks out there and patterned cardstocks um, that you can use. But what I wanted to show you was that actually looks a little bit dull at the moment. But because this is coated cardstock, um, and I, I'm pretty sure that Lisa has some coated cardstock, she's double checking for me, but um, any shiny coated cardstock you can use for this. And all you need to do is literally, sorry if this is shaking the camera, but is literally go over it with a piece of kitchen towel and polish it up. It's not going to change the colours, it's not going to move any of the colours, but it is going to give a shine to that card. Can you see that? And I just think that is, if you're going to then die cut onto that, I just think that is, is beautiful. And especially with the, um, the, um, the embossing folders, as if you can see the difference there, unembossed and embossed. And I just think I just think it's a beautiful effect. So I should be using a lot more of this in lots of different colours, I think. And just to show you that, I mean, Elizabeth used um, mirror card. So I just thought I'd show you how. And again, I've extended this on mirror card. And I've also used it on black card. So you'll see these two pieces appearing on future projects, projects even. Um, but these are just scrap pieces of card out of my box. So it just goes to show you that all those scrap pieces that you've been saving for ages, you can now beautifully 3D emboss with all sorts of beautiful 3D embossing folders available from Lisa Horton Crafts, appearing on your telly box on Monday, the 7th of December. So that's it from me today. Um, I hope it was okay. I know I've gone a little bit over time, sorry about that, but I just wanted to show you the different things that I've tried. Um, so I, I hope you like them. Um, I hope you watch the shows on Monday. I hope you get what you want. Trust me, your card making will go to a whole new level with these folders. You will not regret buying these. And, it, and again, they work so beautifully with everything else. Look out for the card that Lisa Robson made. Um, it is a mixture of so many of Lisa's products. And it's such a beautiful card. It's such a fun little card. I love it. Um, and yeah, if Lisa doesn't make me one for Christmas, I should cry. Anyway, I'm going now. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Um, don't forget Lisa's on really early on Monday. So you need to either set your, your boxes to record or set your alarm in, get yourself up and sit in bed and have a nice cup of tea and watch Lisa. So I will see you next Friday, all being well. And Claire will be with you on Tuesday and then Heidi on Wednesday, all being well. So thanks very much for joining me and I'll see you again next Friday for another card making session. Bye everybody.